Hello and welcome to another video. I've been working a lot with Django and its test cases at work and I found two surprising things and I figured I would share them with you. Um, the first has to deal with how Django does or doesn't clean up the database. Um, and I'm going to show you a surprising thing that I found. Of course, this might not be surprising once I explain how it works, but alas. Uh, I'm going to be using Sentry's base test cases, but it's very similar to Django's test case. In fact, it extends from it and adds a bunch of other garbage to it. And we're going to be using some of Sentry's models. So you can imagine this being a plain, normal Django project, and these things would work the same. Um, I'm not going to set up a Django project, though. From sentry.testutils.cases, import test case, and from sentry.models.environment, import environment. And we're going to basically set up just two tests. One that's going to create an environment, uh, environment.get or create. This is very similar to Django's get or create, but of course, Sentry has a custom version for whatever reason. And self.project is magical. There's a thing on this test case which sets it up, but ignore all that. Uh, we create one environment. We should be able to say that assert len of environments.objects.all is equal to one. Create an environment, there should be one in the database, essentially. Um, if we make another test case, the database should get cleared between tests, and it does. So if we do this and we say, copy the same assertion down here, but change the number to zero, these two tests should pass. Now, between tests, Django's test case will clear the database. Uh, and the way that it does this is it starts a transaction and then just rolls it back at the end of the test. Uh, if we run this, you'll see that these two tests pass. They, of course, take a while because Django has to set up the database and do all sorts of other Django-y things, but they pass, which is great. Um, that's, that's sort of what I expect, and that's, that's all fine and dandy. However, if we import concurrent.futures and we make a thread pool, concurrent.futures.threadpool executor, and the thread pool runs in process, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Uh, we say a future is equal to exe.submit, environment.get or create, self.project, and you can't see it because it's off the screen, but we'll, we'll tab it out so that you can see what I'm actually writing here. Yeah, look at that. Nice and on screen and not behind my head. Uh, and if we collect the result of that, we don't really care about the results. Um, but this, this test should pass. You know, we create we create an environment in a background thread, and we should see it reflected in the database, and that should all work fine and dandy. Uh, what's surprising about this is just because I ran this in a thread, this test is going to fail. This database state that we create in a thread is going to leak outside of our main test here. And you'll see here we get one passing test and one failing test. Uh, once it actually goes, because it takes forever. There we go, we get a failing test. So the surprising behavior here is that because I created a database model object inside of a thread, uh, and not the, the main thread, it does not get reverted or doesn't get deleted at the end of a test. Now, of course, you can fix this. Uh, well, first I should say the reason for this. The reason for this is a thread, uh, or the, the connections and connection pools in Django are thread locals, and so if you make a new thread, they're going to get a new set of connections, and so they don't share the same transaction as the main test, and so when the transaction is rolled back, it obviously doesn't roll it back in the threads. The, the, the objects have been committed, and the test is none the wiser, and so this object that we create in the thread pool gets leaked into these other tests, and so it may cause test failures and other stuff. I mean, the reason that I found this in the first place was it was causing a test failure. I ran one particular test and then another particular test. This one had database model objects that it just didn't expect, and so the test would crash. You can, of course, fix this by using Django's transaction test case, which I think is very strangely named because I think the normal test case uses a transaction, and the transaction test case, I think, just deletes and recreates the database. Uh, so I'm not sure why it's called this, but that's a whole different thing. Uh, but what transaction test case will do is it'll tear down the entire database and set it up. So it's a lot slower, um, but it at least will guard against this particular failure mode, which is that um, the objects will no longer leak outside of the test because they get cleaned up on teardown. Do, 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 do. And you can see it takes forever because, you know, well, forever. <laughs> it takes several seconds longer than before because it has to do 
essentially a full database wipe instead of just rolling back a transaction, which is much, much cheaper. Uh, so that's the first surprising thing that threads and I guess multiprocessing also will leak uh, objects outside of tests. They don't get cleaned up. Uh, the other thing is I think a little less surprising, but oh, microphone. Uh, but I wanted to show it anyway. Uh, let's take this back to just being the normal creation here and no thread pool. So just have a normal test like this. Get or create. We get this. Um, I'm going to actually make a second test here that's essentially the same thing. Call this test two. Uh, we no longer need this one at the bottom, so I'll just get rid of it. Um, and these tests should pass in the same way. Uh, and they do. We run this. Everything's fine and dandy. Uh, the surprising behavior that I ran into is that those two environment objects will have a different primary key. The first one will have ID of one, but the second one will have an ID of two. Uh, and so if you were doing something based on a hard-coded ID, so for instance, we did assert, uh, I can just sign this up here, env equals this, say assert env.id equals one, we did the same thing down here, assert env.id equals two, of course, get rid of the length assertions here. Um, well, we would we would expect it to be one, however, if we run the test now, you'll see that the second assertion fails. And this is because the primary key state is not cheap to revert, and at least, uh, this may be Postgres specific, but uh, Django doesn't, you know, you create an object in a transaction, you roll back the transaction, the primary key state is still incremented. And so future tests, if they depend on hard-coded IDs, which you probably shouldn't have tests depending on hard-coded IDs. However, surprise, surprise, the only reason I noticed this is because I found tests that did this, um, yeah, basically, you shouldn't depend on hard-coded IDs. Now, unfortunately, the um, the way we fixed this before with transaction test case doesn't quite work. There is this reset sequences uh, option to transaction test case, which will go through and reset all the primary keys back to their default state. However, this only sort of works. So I'll, I'll show you here. This test will now pass because it will actually reset it before this test runs. Um, but if you have a test that you know breaks the primary key state, you can't really fix it for the rest of your test suite, unfortunately. You would have to just turn every test into a transaction test case, which just doesn't seem good. Uh, and the reason for this is uh, if we actually change this to be in a second test here, test two, and just a normal, a normal test case here, because this one doesn't do anything special, um, but we know this one modifies the sequences here. Annoyingly, this will fail uh, because reset sequences only happens on setup, but not on teardown, which is surprising to me. I actually think this is a bug, so I reported it as one, but I don't. It's so minor that I don't know if anyone will ever fix it, but I see that this test should fail now. Well, should fail. Oh, it passed. Wait, what? Why did it work this time? Oh, because it ran in a different order? It probably ran in a different order. Probably forced the ordering. Yeah, see, it ran test two before test one. So you would have to force the ordering in the other direction, which ugh, not easy to do with this. But trust me, if these ran in the opposite order, then um, we would see the, the failure mode there. Um, and I, I don't think I can just select them. And maybe I can. Let's see if I just manually tell it to run this order. It might reorder it. There's some special stuff that PyTest Django does to try and make transaction test cases have happen first because they're slower and it's easier to mess with the database data. Yeah, so it still ran them in the same order. But trust me, if they ran in the opposite order, uh, the second one would have failed, unfortunately. I guess I can show you how I can force the order. So a little bit more involved, and it's going to involve a plugin that I use to, uh, this is the order that we want them to run in, and then PyTest. Dash P, detect test pollution. I think this is how it works. No. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> We're doing it live. Uh, what is the option? DDP, oh, this one. So detect test pollution is a test pollution plugin that I wrote. and. It has an option that allows you to force the order of tests that will run so that it can figure out the pairwise stuff. So 
This will force the particular ordering that I was talking about, and you can see now it fails. But obviously, I had to force the order, so not necessarily what you would want to do. Anyway, those are the two weird things I learned, which is, um, yeah, uh, threads leak database objects, and the other is that primary key state is still persisted outside of tests, even if the transaction is rolled back. Um, they both kind of make sense when you think about what's happening, but uh, finding them was definitely head scratching and uh, debugging them was fun. So I figured I would share. Anyway, if there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.